now 6.30 p.m. I'm Chairman Mike Curry, and I'd like to call this Board of Selectmen business meeting to order on this 12th day of February 2020. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to state for the record that the entire proceeding this evening, except any executive sessions, are being recorded for both TCTV, Cable Station 8, and our YouTube channel. Therefore, there is no need for additional recording. If you do wish to record, just let us know. Thank you. As always, our agenda for this evening has been set no later than 48 hours out by law and is publicly available at the official source for town information, templetonma.gov. I would also remind all citizens of the four villages to sign up or register for emergency updates using the code red system that you can find on the bottom lower left hand of our web page. Also, um, I know that Narragansett has a two hour delay uh, for tomorrow morning because of inclement weather. Uh, they do their own system outside of code red so you can sign up using uh, the information you get from your, uh, your children's school for their updates. Although I have the discretion as chairperson to add and remove from the agenda, it has been set to allow for time, personnel resources, and public awareness. I reserve the right to move agenda items around to best fit our business and our guests. Thank you. And we will be moving a little bit around tonight. Okay, first thing on our agenda this evening, or uh, first thing we always do is public comment. Do I have any public comment at this time? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on to our um, administrative items, which is our meeting minutes, both from a regular meeting and executive session minutes. Uh, the regular minutes are from the, our um, January 29th meeting and the, the same executive mi minutes from that same evening. I make a motion to approve the minutes of January 29th, 2020, um, as written. I have a motion. Do I have a second? So moved. Um, second. Moved or second? Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the minutes? Corrections, additions, clarifications? I don't hear any additional comments. So on the motion to accept the meeting minutes for the 29th of January, that has been seconded. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Abstain. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. I make a motion to approve the executive session minutes of January 29th, 2020 as written and not to be released to the public at this time. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the not releasing the executive mission, executive session minutes from the 29th? Hearing no further discussion on the vote on the motion to ex accept uh, to not release the executive session minutes for the 29th. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Abstain. Diane? Yes. I vote yes as well. Okay, that completes our administrative business for this evening, or kind of. Like we have, we have um, before we move into any of the uh, interactive um, pieces, any inter introductions of new employees, Mr. Chairman? I have Karen none Dean? for you this evening, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Um, and last on the administrative, we have uh, committee appointments and vacancies. We have two, this, three this evening for the open space committee. Mm -hmm. In your packet, you will find appointments. And I don't think that there are applications to go along with them. Mm -hmm. I just, um, yeah, I make a motion to appoint Amanda Susi um, and Michael Curry and also to to the um, open space committee for a one-year term to expire get the reason. June what why are they expiring on June 30th of 2020 if they're one year yeah, you can. annual appointment so it's technically from July 1 through the 20th so are they expiring June 2020 or are they expiring June 2021 so it'll be a year and a half. If you'd like to do a year and a half, we could do that to make it easier. Or we can just do them with the annual when they come up. That's what I usually do. 
Do okay, so it's not, there. so right now it's a half a year term for two, exp not even a half a year. Well, I'm not going to say the one year term. So Amanda Susie and Michael <laughs> Curry to expire on June 30th of 2020 and to reappoint um, John Henshaw to the Open Space Committee um, to also expire on June 30th of 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the, um, the appointments to the Open Space Committee um, ending June 30th, 2020? Okay, hearing nothing further, I'll call the, the roll, but I will abstain because I'm on there. <laughs> Thank you. On the, um, on the motion to appoint for less than one year term expiring on June 30th, 2020, that would be Amanda Suzy and Michael Curry in a reappointment to the same expiration date. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I abstain. Great. Um, Mr. Terenzini, do you, I'm gonna, I'd like to move um, the Otter River Sportsman's Club. It, uh, is the uh, the Money Tech budget preview um, is, actually, is, say is, again? As far as we know, but uh, um, I don't see any problem in moving uh, things around to accommodate people. Or, uh, okay, but d like Dr. Harity and Ms. Crockett are not coming in. Uh, we expected? did not have any message they were not coming in. Oh. Um, so if uh, if they don't show, we'll just um, contact them in the morning again. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to, let's see, well, I mean, I guess we can skip over that if they're not here. So I don't need to move um, Otter River Sportsman Club up. He follows naturally in the next one. Come on up, sir. And then you sit at the table with the microphone. And could you state your name for the record? My name is uh, Leslie Dalset, D O S S E T T. Mr. Dalset. Okay. Um, this evening we have um, a change of manager and director for the Otter River Sportsman Club. Everyone should be able to find that in their packet. And um, speaking with Mr. Dalset before the. Uh, before the meeting started, you're 100% you're correct. It's a formality, but obviously something that's required for yes. for, um, for the municipal uh, administration of it. Okay. Um, all f there, are there fees aside with it? Um, every all fees have been filed and otherwise, or do they? Okay. What's the? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the application for a change of manager and director for Otter River Sportsman's Club. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? Um, Mr. Chairman, on the back page, the investigator, Brad M. Doyle, are you familiar with him, Mr. Doyle? Yes, I am. This is what he, should I read it or should I, I just let him read it? I, I would, um, Holly, on. Um, that is from the first they had come before to do the change of manager, announced the results that came back because they weren't, they didn't have the change of director on there. So okay. they just wanted them to reapply. So that I just put that in there so you guys would know. So they're up to they speed. Everything's yep. hunky Everything's all set now. Oh, yep. good. Thank you. We hope. Don't scare me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, anything else? I, I have um, a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion on Otter River Sportsman Clubs and Mr. Dossett's change of manager? Um, and director. Okay, hearing no further uh, questions or comments on the motion to approve uh, the application for change of manager and director for Otter River Sportsman Club, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. Now you vote yes as well. Thank you, Mr. Dossett. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry about the confusion. No, no problem. Glad to, glad to see y'all work. <laughs> I'd like to just say for the record, I like our momentum right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to state for the record that I love it. Ma'am, what are you here for? I'm 
Right oh, up for the craft fair. Step you're, right guess up. what? You're next. Step right up. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> Christine. Yes. Uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Pervier. Pervier. Yes. Hello, Christine. Hi, Diane. It is so nice to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Too. And I'm so happy that you took over. Thank well, you so much. not just me. <laughs> how it's many kind are of a, on like your a committee? Committee, uh, community, community kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So there's like probably like six or seven of us together uh -huh. um, mostly Tara uh, Corey she's the one that kind of does it she was actually supposed to be here tonight talking but she has the flu <laughs> so uh. I kind of just got thrown into this like a few hours ago <laughs> um, tell me how things are going pretty good um, we're getting there I mean it's different you know than anything else I I've like the really name done. I like the name too yeah, because we want to make it more of a family kind of oriented thing, like have games for kids. I'm sorry, Mike, you don't mind me asking? I don't mind you asking. Christine questions. and I graduated together. Yeah. Oh. So we have yes. a history going way back. Yes, we've known each other for a long time. time. <laughs> <laughs> will you still be doing scholarships? Yes. Oh, yes. You, you yeah. will. And that's where we're getting back to the kids doing the work and not the parents of the children doing the work. Okay. So... Um, it kind of got a little bit swayed the other way. Okay. Um, so we want the kids doing everything, not parents. Okay. Um, we're going to kind of back off on the food, hopefully. Um, we were thinking of maybe, we're not sure, because we were going to bring it up to uh, you all, um, of doing food trucks. Ooh. Or have the, and the Lions Club, um, of Templeton, I talked to Mike Manka, and they may cook also, because um, they have all their their equipment and their stuff to do burgers and dogs and that kind of thing. Because it's it, it's got way it got way out of hand of for food, <laughs> and it's so and it's a lot to and do. You, you would have to approach the board of health. Okay, just so right. I didn't know. know. Okay, so, so you would yes, have to approach okay. the board of health. So you okay. can keep that in the back of your head if that's yeah. something that you're thinking about doing because you would have to meet all their requirements right. and guidelines. Yeah, I wasn't sure. So they, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. so just that's so you know that. Yep, yeah. nope, that's why I brought it up because I didn't know. <laughs> okay, and um, what other changes will be made? The other thing we wanted to do was do, I did bring it up to um, Chief Bennett. We want to do a road race on yeah, Sunday. I, we see that in an email here. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um, it would be from um, Narragansett, which I talked to them, and they would let us use the bathrooms in the facility for the runners to start. Mm -hmm. And we would go in the back, like down. Um, down below? Yeah, down from the um, from the school to Brooks Road to Lord Road. Um, um, to Lord goes into Otter River, and then to Ballonville Road, and then we'd use Boynton. Like LeClerc? Oh, Boynton up to the center, you're saying? Right. Oh. And it would oh, go to cool. the Historical Society. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, John Maganowitz is the one that, he's the one that, um, th that did the, <clears throat> the path for it, and he's used to doing road races, and um, so we were hoping that we could do that on Sunday morning. Have you spoken that's with the, the police chief and the fire chief about that? The police chief, yes. Fire chief, no. Just um, when you're doing a road race, you may need an ambulance in case something were to happen to mm -hmm. someone. Yep, so uh, yep, I can speak to him. Okay. Or yep. contract medical care. Right. Yeah, because we'd have, like, you know, obviously station for water and then mm -hmm. the CERT people and, and volunteers. And have you spoken to CERT? Um, I think Tara did, and I'm not quite certain. I didn't really get... Okay, so that would be um, Rich Curtis... Yep. Yeah, yeah. She has all his information and everything. Oh. Okay. I don't think Rich. I don't think Rich, Rich is back yet. So Mike Dixon might be a better. Mike Dixon. Okay. He's his deputy. Yeah. Okay. So right. I'm not sure. Uh, um, again, I you may wish to speak to the fire chief just for yep. in yep. case something were to happen to someone. Oh yeah. You would yep. want to make sure that there's ambulance on site. Mm -hmm. And maybe Rich would have more. Or Mike Dixon would have more information about yep. that. Okay. <clears throat> yep. But you did speak to the police chief. Yes. Yep. I okay. got, he said there was no. He saw no problems with it. So. Okay. Yeah. Any uh, other questions, Mike? When uh, Christine, when is the uh, the road race 
occurring in conjunction with the actual or on Sunday morning Sunday morning yeah okay it approximately takes about an hour to run it, it you know between how good you are at running and how bad you are <laughs> um, right. you have blockers too um, Jonathan's really good so he mapped out your whole right run. Yeah. yeah yeah he's very good um, so we're thinking about like eight from like eight like start at eight and so they can end at at the center, and at, at the, the town. And activities you know, are so going on all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Friday is set up. Set up, okay. Yep. Yeah, that's normally how that works. Yeah, yeah they usually, the, the yeah, same. yep, yeah. Okay. We would like to, yes. Okay. Um, I, I know Diane started asking questions uh, right off the mm -hmm. bat. Did you have a presentation or do you have like a, a, a plan? Like a, like a more formal plan, like a once over the world, what's going on? I'm, I'm just a little nervous that we're adding in a bunch of stuff. You're, you're here tonight to get um, approval to use the town common, but I know it, so, it yeah. sounds like we're adding a we're bunch adding of stuff. I got race. an email. This person's got the sick. Uh, I'm just wondering if you had something that was comprehensive that gave me the surety that there is a plan. Does what that do make you, sense? What do you mean by plan? I don't... But, um, we we're going to we're going to meet, we're gonna meet three it. you know I have nothing here other than my the, what my administrative staff has prepared to say that it's 3 days this has how many people we, that we expect um, I've already met with the police chief I've I've got nothing that says this the who what when where why so it's basically the same but you're adding a road race right Okay. Yeah, it's just the it's same thing that's happened okay. for 40 I just wondered years. if there was any other changes. That's right. all I'm really asking. And she said they're kind of getting back to basics. Okay. And using the kids. Right. And since this is like a changeover from who's been running it for many years, I just was I, and excited I'm fully that someone aware. I, took over. I 100% agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I, yeah, I can't share your sentiment enough about that. Yeah, I'm I just, very excited. Treating everyone the same, when they come in, they ask to use town property and everything, we want to make sure right. that we've got everything in, in order. And there's nothing to say that the, the, new, the new regime doesn't do it better. I don't, <laughs> right. Um, Food trucks, that's another thing. That you, that's that, different. Yeah. So that's a little bit I different would already than anybody. Yeah, but we're just thinking of that. We're not. Yeah. Right. You so know. you're not really proposing that yet? No. I, no. So that's I agree something with Terry. That I think it's a good idea. I think it's, it's a fantastic it's a good idea. idea. It I'm does, hungry just thinking it's about it. It's a good it. idea. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. So are you basically, and just to get our approval for the Arson Cross Festival that's been going on in Templeton for 40 <laughs> plus years. <laughs> yes. And you are introducing yourself as the new person that's going to chair that committee right. yes. and yes, there might basically. be a couple of small changes and you know who the go-to people are correct yeah the chief of police the chief of fire if yep. necessary and the board of health. and the board of health yeah yeah and, and, and okay and that's yeah. great I think thank that's you. a great clarification thank you Julie yeah. <laughs> mr. chairman I move to approve the use of the town common for the arts and crafts festival uh, on August 14 15 and 16 2020. Yep, just add that in there, please. As presented, pending parking plan approval from police chief and required insurance certificate is provided to the selectman's office on or before July 30th, 2020, and um, to possible Board of Health mm -hmm. um, getting involved as well if necessary. Yeah. Second. I have a motion and a second. Thanks, Julie. Any further discussion on Christine's proposal? No. I'm just very, I'm just very excited, and I just want to help lead you <laughs> As down the right I, road. Thank you for stepping yeah, up. No, that's no huge. problem. I just, I don't know how all this works, so was, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just, don't I, be sorry. I you, you shouldn't be. I would have been sorry. You plan, do fine. <laughs> they'll yell at Your me. Your plan later. is fine. Okay. All right. They will yell at me. Later. We just want to vote. Huh? We, we I will. It, was, oh, it no. sounded like there was still discussion going no, on. No, I just so. want to say how excited I am, <laughs> okay. and we just want to help you. Okay. If there's no further discussion on the motion to approve the use of the town common for the Arts and Crafts Festival on August 14th, 15th, 16th, with all the other considerations that Julie just spoke of, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. All Thank right. you very much for coming tonight. Thank right. you. Thank you. It's so nice to see you. It's good to see you, too. I'll email you with the insurance requirements of the certificate. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Do you want to go email me? And email me and we'll get together at some okay. point. Get some checkup. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. I'm sorry. Did I overstep my bounds? No, I'm. I'm. So, you guys did a great job. You, you're the continuity. I'm. I'm the. No, I just. Are we really Are we checking our blocks? Sight of sight excited. Absolutely. And I was. I was following that entire eleventh hour. Um, people jumping in and, and volunteering. I think it's fantastic. I'm just trying to maintain consistency for everybody right. in our community. Uh, next on the agenda, we've got uh, F, F is in Foxtrot 1 and 2, Baldwinville Elementary School parcels concerning the surplus and state restrictions and also the sale of land to DCR. Adam, it looks like you'll be briefing on us on those. Well, uh, Mr. Terrence was supposed to. I was just going to provide some backup if I wanted to, but it, Mr. Terrence you want me to present or you want to do it? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, first off, uh, Diane was on the Baldville Elementary School Disposition Committee. We went out to RFP for the uh, three parcels. I believe it was 383, 384, and 385. Is that correct, Diane? Yes. Um, we, and as you know, uh, in this proposal, we're, we were looking at splitting parcel on your plan in front of you, parcel 407, to include that as part of this uh, RFP for the second RFP. Uh, we believe this site the Baldwin Elementary School between 383, 384, 385, and half of the lower 407 will be more marketable for the whole new zoning for the overlay district to include this portion. Uh, we believe it will be successful. We've received uh, interest via phone calls, uh, and ultimately we need you to declare the surplus, <coughs> but we also need a 15-foot uh, right-of-way to run alongside parcel 407, mm -hmm. closer to 388. So we put, we will have to state the restrictions for procurement on that parcel. Uh, Carter was involved with that. If you wanted to speak further on that, Carter, I or you don't know how much more could be said. Right. I mean, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, we just need to basically include 407 because you already declared surplus. The previous board declared surplus to other three parcels. We just need to do this more of house cleaning before you could really go through the, f the thorough procurement process for 30B. May I ask what kind of interest calls you're receiving for what kind of, do they state what kind of business? Cultivation. Oh, still cultivation. Because of the overlay district, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And as you know, I mean, being on there before mm -hmm. the site, we ran into zoning problems before but we yes, cleared that all up because the board worked with the planning board. We right. went through the process, and we have the zoning bylaw that was approved by the attorney general. Right. Yeah, I think it is definitely district. much yeah, more um, marketable with 407 Thank because you. they had asked about that. Correct. Um, the last people who were going to purchase, and that was more. This is definitely more marketable. Thank you. So I move to declare as surplus property the lower portion of parcel 407 as shown on the map presented for the purpose of selling with the Baldwinville Elementary School parcels and to comply with state restrictions. Second. Oh, and, and you want to state the restrictions of 15 foot right away. Just and with a 15 foot right away. I have a motion in a second for um, Thank parcel you. 407 to, to declare as surplus property. Are this, is there any further questions or comments? I'm not hearing any further questions or comments on the motion to declare um, parcel 47 uh, the map provided um, for the purpose of selling with Baldwinville Elementary School parcels and to comply with state restrictions and a 15 foot right of way how do you vote Jeff yes Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. I have a, I vote yes as well. Thank you. And second part is the um, sale. Mr. Chairman, if I might, yep. uh, on this issue, we are assembling a, because this is not a auction, it's a proposal situation uh, in which we look at a number of factors, job creation, tax creation, a renovation of the property. We are convening a five-member ranking committee uh, within two weeks after the proposals are in. Uh, and we would like to ask a member of the select board 
uh, to sit on that panel. If you might get that tonight, that would be helpful. Okay. <clears throat> that That's the panel for the consideration of this the sale of land? Yes. Okay. Uh, you want that to be of any, so that. Well, I did it before. Uh, Diane, I don't mind volunteering. Diane again. did it before and has some familiarity with the okay. process, if that's All right. um, given her interest. Are we relying on email, or, or is there any kind of, for what we have on the agenda tonight, what are we discussing? Um, I just need you to let me know who from the board is going to. Okay. Sit on that. And that's panel. what we're going to achieve with this agenda item tonight? Yes. Okay. Not what's not what's pre been prepared. Um, I can put it on the next agenda. That's okay. easy enough. Okay. Um, so I move to appoint uh, Diane Haley. Diane Haley um, to the, the five person committee um, in order to. to Facilitate the sale? Yeah, facilitate the sale of map 4-02, parcel 2, located on Royalston Road in 3-07, uh, parcel 5-8, located on Athol Road. I'm, no. I'm sorry, no? Mr. Chairman. All right. no. um, I'm I, for this. The five-member five committee for four uh, seven. is to all right. rank I thought we had moved on to the next one. That's why I was confused. Oh, I did, too. Uh, yeah, all right. My apologies. What? Well, no, um, for, the, for the declaration of I had moved on property. to the next. He walked away. I moved on to the next agenda item, so I misunderstood. That's what I thought we were talking about. Uh, so in, in simplest Point terms, we have a five-member committee being established to rank the proposals. Ms. Okay. Haley has um, volunteered. volunteered to do that, and, and if that is agreeable with the board, we would like to know that so mm. that we can uh, make sure she gets a copy of the proposal. Right. I move to appoint in. Diane Haley to the five-member proposal screening committee for parcel 407. Second. I have a motion and a second. I mean, any further discussion on um, having Diane be a part of that committee? Just one question. Mm -hmm. Is it just the little driveway there, or is 407 including the Baldwinville Elementary School it, and what it, it's It's all the Baldwinville School proposals. So that is now called 407? Um, sure. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. I'm like, what? We just need to vote on a parking yeah. lot? <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously. Okay. All right. So, um, I mean, the, the motion can be reflected as the Baldwinville Elementary School parcels. Can I right. vote? your point. Can I vote? I don't think so. Okay, yeah. so I'll just abstain. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? I think you should just vote. But that's my opinion. You vote on yourself? Okay. Uh, I, I was just They're asking. entitled to if you want to, okay. is what I'm saying. Play it safe okay, and not. <laughs> I'll just abstain. Good. Okay. On the motion to appoint Diane Haley to the five-person proposal consideration committee for the sale of Baldwinville Elementary School parcels, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Abstain. Julie? Yes. I vote yes. Thank you all. All right. Item five, Foxtrot two. Is he briefing me on that one? Okay. What's that momentum that I was getting excited about? All right, uh, Mr. Terenzini, we have moved on to five F two. Uh, yes, we have uh, presented to you uh, a deed of sale for the first two parcels. Um, being sold to the DCR. Uh, we've sent you some additional information uh, today on how to complete the sale, uh, but we seek uh, your authorization both for the board to execute deed. this deed. I think he sent it. I think he sent it through email. Maybe it was in yeah, our email. Yeah. 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 Yes. If the board would like copies of it, we can certainly make those for you quickly enough. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. 
has to be um, I see in your email it has to be done before the annual town meeting uh, no you have authority from the annual town meeting to sell this okay I, I don't think I had any time to review this you don't think what I didn't hear you I didn't have enough time to review this uh, to really understand what the implications are is that up by Norcross I, of is that up by the, the new, it's Fern Cole, right? Fern Cole School. Yes. So, Is uh, it the front or ba back? back? Backing up, if I might, for a brief bit of history. Uh, we were approached by the Department of Fish and Game um, well over a year ago to see if we would uh, sell them two parcels of land as they attempted to assemble 500 Plus or minus acres. Okay, I do remember that. Um, the 500 acres was their basic requirement for a grant that they were going for. Um, initially, the town talked about um, letting them have rights to use it, but retaining it. And in the end, the CPC, the Open Space Land uh, Committee, the Conservation Committee, all were satisfied that a sale. Uh, was certainly the best way to go. Uh, we have uh, the one parcel that we have clear title to, and we have a second parcel that has title issues. The town meeting authorized you to sell both parcels. This is the first of the two. This is the one without the title issues. Um, and there's some money issues related to it. We're being paid $13,200. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll probably realize from the two parcels uh, around 22000 after costs. And the uh, email we sent out today described how we would go about dealing with the second parcel. Right. So how should our motion read? Could you... Let me... There's no motion on the. Yes. I move under the authority of Article 16 of the annual. If I, if I might do this, because Holly um, oh, I didn't get it. had the entirety of the town meeting article, and we should probably truncate that a little bit. Okay. If one looks at the amended motions that were passed out, um, I would I respectfully. They were in our mailboxes. They were in our mailboxes. Yep. Oh, I didn't go in there. The amended. This one? Yeah. yeah. The amended were in our mailboxes. Mail yeah. Well, that's all right. I, I, someone okay. else can just make the motion. That's fine. So um, I would respectfully request, uh, Mr. Chairman, that the board, um, a member of the board, move under authority of Article 16 of the annual town meeting of 2019 to sell the land identified on the town's assessing maps is map 4-02, parcel 2. Uh, this is the 12-acre parcel located on Royalston Road to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, acting by and through its Department of Conservation and Recreation, and to execute the deed, therefore, as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? Does the... Um, Mr. Terenzini, does the uh, advisory committee uh, know about this or do they anticipate? Oh, I sent uh, out on the second parcel. Uh, the original I hope would be we'd do it all at the same closing table. The money would wash together and we'd have enough cash on the table to do everything. Um, so the when the state decided, nope, they were going to do them as separate transactions, this parcel's 13.2, the other one is 16 and change plus costs. Uh, so when I sent you all that um, explanation today, uh, I did copy the advisory committee on it okay. uh, so that they knew it was coming. Um, I got one question from a member um, confusing d another project, uh, but we were able to get them an answer that satisfied them. Right. Um, and I would certainly hope that the advisory committee would see the merits and the transfer that we're speaking of. Otherwise, we'll have to find the money internally inside the select board budget. Um, I don't think that they've done anything with the uh, with the um, 
reserve Re with the reserve account. We've had far. one transfer for five hundred dollars uh, so far this year. That's not that's not the Trini one. That one's denied, right? That one was denied, and um, I have another uh, partner that's going to pay for that. All right. Any further questions or discussion? <clears throat> On the motion that has been seconded um, to sell the land identified on the town's assessing map as 402, parcel 2, located on Royalston Road, and 307. No, no, not the second one. Not the second one? That has the deed restriction. Just okay. the first one. Tonight. Okay. Which is parcel 58. Right, you have authority to sell the second one, but we don't have that in front of you tonight. So we think it best to strike that from the draft okay. motion. Which one? So it's this, but strike that. So this one, and not the and, and. Okay. And motion under Article 16 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting to sell the land identified on the assessing maps as 402 Parcel 2 and located on Athol Road to the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts acted by and through its Department of Conservation and Recreation and to execute the deed therefore as presented. You said Athol Road, it's Royalston Road, not Athol Road. It's okay. Royalston Road. Royalston Road instead of Athol Road. Right. right. Sorry. Not you. Um, on that motion, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. <coughs> All right. Uh, next item up is our open annual town meeting warrant to citizens' petitions. Did I, I, did I just achieve it by saying that? <laughs> no, I make a motion to Pretty open close. the annual town meeting warrant to citizens' petitions tonight and for the warrant to close on Monday, March 2nd, 2020 at 4 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that declaration? Motion. Hearing none, on the motion to open the town annual meeting Warrant to citizens petition tonight for, and for the work to close on Monday, March 2nd at 4 p.m. Uh, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. I vote yes as well. Okay. Uh, in your packet, you will notice you, had, you have attachments for the next one, which is proposed amendments to financial management policy, uh, specifically the education esca uh, escalator. Uh, yeah, we've uh, got a couple of things in here on the second uh, page at the top. Uh, we would be substituting uh, assessments for each school district that the town is a member of shall increase by the amount of two and one. That's a, a typo. We'll fix half percent. Uh, replacing that assumption for the state's uh, net school spending requirements will annually be met or uh, reflected. Uh, exceeded um, and so that's that's our instruction in preparing that five-year estimate uh, on revenue and expenses um, in uh, item nine um, we uh, are recommending that we change uh, the period uh, that we look at new growth from three years to five years uh, the reason for that is it would then reflect what we're doing with all the other revenues which is five years dropping the high dropping the low and this will keep that pattern uh, tied up uh, tied together uh, in item three the forecast itself um, so now we go from this five-year forecast to me actually submitting a budget to you uh, and we generally have that budget to you without necessarily having the school numbers in hand uh, so we're mirroring um, the two and a half percent um, so that when we send you the budget, our set aside for education is two and one half percent, and we build the town budget to that. Uh, now, um, it also does recognize uh, that that's okay, that's projection, that's the methodology, but then we have to be real, they still get to do what they want. Um, 
uh, and we also uh, recognize that there may be times when that simply doesn't work and that's how we tried to show you how those three elements of the school assessment uh, are integrated um, on the next page we had discussed in workshop um, uh, uh, when this policy was written having a general stabilization fund of 5% of the prior's omnibus operating budget uh, was considered um, a, a, a pretty a pretty tough goal to meet well, I think we got there fairly quickly uh, and the board talked about that really at the end of the day wasn't enough um, and so the number that had been discussed was eight. I think at some point you're really going to want to do a deeper analysis and uh, look at your debt load. You're probably going to be closer to 12, uh, 12 and a half by the time uh, you get into that deeper. But we want to keep moving that up a little bit um, as you uh, improve because the reserves do matter. Um, as someone said the other week, uh, in the capital stabilization, uh, we talked about increasing that from 1% of the prior year's omnibus operating budget to 2%, again, moving that up a little bit. Uh, and this uh, policy recognizes that at some point you really need to base the size of the reserve, not on your operating budget, but on what your capital assets are. Mm -hmm. What's the values of your building um, and your rolling stock? Uh, so uh, the last one, uh, is that when the policy was written, I think there'd been a crossover uh, and you'd appropriated some monies, but I don't believe it had yet been uh, escrowed in a segregated account. Um, and uh, that's my recollection anyways. So we want to strike the line that says Templeton has not yet appropriated any money into an OPEB trust uh, because um, even at that time we had appropriated money. It just the trust may not have been created and the money may not have been there. But we think that would clean that up as well. So uh, those are the changes that we present to you tonight, all of which have been discussed except for this very last one uh, at one or more workshops or board meetings. It was more than one. Yeah, we talked about the 8 and 2% two, two corresponding a while back. Yes. But I recall that. Yeah, I think the only one that may be new is, is OPEB. That came up. Uh, Jeff uh, caught that in one of his proofreading moments. Um, but we thought since we had this in front of you, why not clean it up? I make a motion to approve the amendment of financial management policy RE education escalator as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? Does <coughs> it <coughs> Yeah. It's rough. I had that one meeting too, and I didn't think I'd be able to catch my breath. Does it matter to anyone the way that the motion went, where it seems like it's specifically education escalator? Do you want me to drop that and just I move to approve the amendment of the financial management policy? Period. That, that should be fine. Right? Or amendments um, of the financial management Carter, policy. Carter, that's fine, right? Yeah, yeah, I think. I think that's that's because it's saying as, as, presented, yeah. as, um, as presented, yes, as presented or as presented. That's yeah, perfect. that's as presented. Okay, I make a motion to approve the amendments of financial management policy as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Like you said, it's pretty much as we had discussed the past couple of meetings. Hearing none on the, the motion to approve the uh, amendments to the financial management policies as presented, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. May I vote yes as well? Next on our agenda this evening is the approval and review of, of notes concerning Templeton Edge, um, Elementary School bans and gobs. Bond anticipatory notes and general obligation bonds. So uh, I'd like to deal with the general obligation bonds uh, first. Uh, it is um, a lengthy two page. I believe that the reading of all of the details can be um, omitted, but I would uh, suggest that a person with the best reading voice of the evening uh, tackle this one, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can get okay. to it. Okay, coffee. 
anyone need a copy? I'm just going to read the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it says it's written as Clark. Julie, you're the clerk, right? Yes. I can, I can read. You don't mind me reading it? No. Okay. Well, that's fine. All right. This that's is for fine. a vote of the Board of Selectmen. I, the clerk of the Board of Selectmen of the town of Templeton, Massachusetts, um, henceforth known as the town, certify that at a meeting of the board held February 12, 2020, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and at which a quorum was present. The following votes were unanimous, unanimously or, or the following votes um, may be unanimously passed, all of which appear on the official record of the board in my custody. Um, this is a propo the proposed um, vote. It uh, proposed vote that the sale of $8,655,000 general obligation school project loan Chapter 70B bonds of the town dated February 26, 2020, henceforth known as the bonds, to Robert W. Baird and Company, Incorporated, at the price of $9,095,388 in accrued interest, if any, is hereby approved and confirmed. The bonds shall be payable on the February 15th of the year's and in the principal amounts and bear interest at the respective rate as follows. Carter, I'm not going to read through the numbers, am I? No, I think those can certainly be admitted. Okay. Um, those are admitted into the record. You can zoom in on that. Um, further voted to approve the sale of $3,675,000 at 2% general obligation bond anticipation notes of the town dated February 27, 2020 and payable February 26, 2021, henceforth known as the notes, to BNY Mellon Capital Markets, LLC, at par in accrued interest, plus a premium of 31327 cents. Further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the bonds, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated January 30th, 2020, in a final official statement dated February 6, 2020, henceforth known as the official statement, each and in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. It is further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated January 30th, 2020, in a final official statement dated February 6, 2020, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, and approved and adopted. And further voted that the bonds shall be subject to redemption at the option of the town upon such terms and conditions are, are at, as are set forth in the official statement. And further voted that the town treasurer and board of selectmen be and are hereby are authorized to execute and deliver continuing and significant events to closure undertakings in compliance with SEC Rule 15C2-12 in such forms as may be approved by Bond Council to the town, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the bonds and notices as applicable for the benefit of the holders of the bonds and notes from time to time. And further voted that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post insurance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the town treasurer and bond council deem sufficient or as such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the bonds and notes and to comply with relevant security laws. And further voted that each member of the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, and the Town Treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. I further certify that the votes were taken at a meeting open to the public, that no vote was taken in by secret ballot 
Then he noticed stating the place, time, date, and agenda for the meeting, which agenda included the adoption of above votes, was voted with the town clerk of the town of Templeton, henceforth known as the town clerk, and a copy thereof posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all, hour, at all hours in or on the municipal building that the office of the town clerk is located, or, if applicable, in accordance with the alternative method of notice prescribed or approved by the Attorney General as set forth in 940 Code of Massachusetts Regulation 29.032 Bravo, at least 48 hours, not including Saturdays and Sundays and legal holidays, prior to the time of the meeting and remain so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decision in connection with the sale of the bonds or the notices were taken in executive session, all in accordance with General Law Chapter 30 Alpha, subsection 18-25 as amended, dated today, 2020, signed by the Clerk of the Board of Selectmen. So moved. Well done. Yeah. instruments? Everyone want to enter into an agreement? <laughs> Any questions um, on the uh, general obligation school project loan? Known as the bonds. I have no qu further questions. We have a first. Do we have a second? Second. We have a chance. That's a good, good point. All right, we have a first and a second. Hearing no further discussion on the motion that has been made and seconded, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Uh, Mr. Chairman, for your information, um, this will uh, cause the tax rate in the coming year to increase by approximately one nickel. One we nickel. Have one, yes, sir. Um, we have been able to, the, the shock was this year, no, no doubt, uh, but the uh, increase in excluded debt next year is around $50,000. Uh, five cents raises uh, around 37, 38,000. So depending upon exactly where we land, it'll be about a nickel. Uh, the FY21 budget will have 75,000 in it um, to pay the interest on the bond anticipation note. Uh, for FY20, pardon? This year. Okay. Uh, for FY22, uh, assuming all things go per plan, and the MSBA reimbursement comes in uh, around uh, February of 21, the bond issue that you will then issue for the balance will have payments approximately equal to the $75,000 you're paying on the BAN. So I anticipate a tax increase for FY21 from the school project of somewhere in the five to six cent region and in fiscal 22, of somewhere in the zero cent to one cent region. Okay. Um, so by 21, how much of the school debt will be on the tax rate? Because that's a question I know that we a lot of us get. Uh, in, in, in 21, virtually all of it, you have 3.675 million that you took a ban on yep. tonight, which is due and payable in February of 21. Now, when is the school technically complete? They're still bouncing around on some items. When will the MSBA come out and audit it? Normally that's an 18 month period. So if we th say that the school was completed in July of, of uh, 20, um, certainly that would mean the audit should be completed by January of 21 with us getting our final reimbursement uh, in January of 21. That would be used to pay down the ban. Mm -hmm. There will be cash on hand that hasn't been used for the project. That will be used to pay down um, the ban. And I anticipate you're going to have a million, million and a half of general obligation bond that you need to take out to uh, satisfy that balance of the bond. Okay. anticipation note um, that would then cause that $75,000 a year give or take debt service 
which is approximately equal to the cost of the band this year. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say zero to one cent. All of this, of course, is subject to the final audit. Is it going to be 18 months, not 24 kind of thing? Okay. So that will remain to, to play out. Uh, but uh, truly, um, uh, from the, the shock to the tax uh, payer, uh, you're basically through, through the through the python, if you will. This was the other the bid information. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, the uh, bond rating uh, drew um, uh, an additional, I think, two bidders over the last That's go fantastic. round. Uh, and I think you will see that the uh, interest rates um, very attractive. Yeah. Um, you will need to go through another bond rating uh, in January of 21. Um, if you can find the monies to do it, I would encourage you to go through a bond rating uh, on a regular basis, uh, in part because it provides a discipline uh, that I think the community would well benefit from right. uh, in terms of its overall financial management. Yeah, it's a good choice they're of words, free. too, a good, a, a, a good discipline. The, the, I, I understand. They're not free, I but I do think it. they impose a discipline and a rigor yeah. The community could and so far we've been getting good news, so why not? <laughs> um, I had the hammer here. An inhaler? The hammer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd had an inhaler. I have um, one. Do you want to borrow it? No, thank you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Terenzini, is that all on five? It is. India? It's, okay. it's everything we could tell you. And please, no one leave because there's lots of paper to sign here after Okay. This. Well, we've—I know we've got an executive session. Are, are you? What are you? I'm just That's Amanda. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I—I I, um. Well, thank you. Not, Crow Hill is not here. No. But do, we don't. But, we don't uh, need uh, right. I know. I know. Um, no, they're not here. Um, <laughs> but we can still vote through it. Yeah, and I just wanted to, just for the record, I, I know sometimes people will ask how late they run on the license. It. The weeknight practice goes from 1 p.m. until dusk, but no later than 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Weekend races are, shall not commence before 9 a.m. and shall cease by 6 p.m. And holidays are 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So they're not running late, just for yeah. the record. And they are in compliance with everything. We just need to vote it pending their insurance certificate and that taxes are confirmed to be paid. So everything is, they, they've provided those things. They provide everything else except except those. have the certificate of insurance or Pending. confirmation. Oh, we that. don't have those. Right. Okay. I make a motion to approve the Pro Hill Racetrack Permit and Common Victualler License pending all taxes are paid to date and insurance certificate is provided with the dates as provided. So I have a motion and a second. I need to further discussion on Crow Hill Racetrack Permit and the Common Victualler License. Hearing nothing on that motion, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well, Holly? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, that is the conclusion of our new business for this evening. Um, on old business, I asked for two items. Um, um, Scout Hall update. Um, I think I had some uh, miscommunication with uh, Carter. You don't have a, a, an update for this evening, correct? Um, we are awaiting board direction. Okay. So I can give um, an update. We uh, d had canceled the first uh, workshop in uh, March because you're going to have that all-day budget session. Uh, I don't want to know when you want to take this up. Um, I do want to uh, make the public aware that when the question came up as to uh, you know, how some of this happened. Um, I did send the board a lengthy explanation, um, and uh, uh, I'm the one who asked uh, Bob and uh, Julie to 
tell us what items were left to be done, get estimates on those, uh, and to seek the additional funding given uh, the lack of uh, movement on the project and a desire to keep forward. Uh, that said, we're not going to do anything uh, until we get a sense of direction from okay. the board. And, and I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, the the meeting, I think it was two, two business meetings, or maybe it was two meetings ago, therefore it was a business meeting when I was remote. Um, I did uh, make the motion to dissolve the, the then current Scout Hall Committee because I thought it had served its purpose. We had a, a variety of different people. By the way, this is an update. Um, and there were, there were questions on where we were. I think that we were stagnating on what was um, the focus that we had at the time. Um, and I, I intently listened to uh, um, several of the, the presentations and the discussion. So moving forward, the ball is back now in the Board of Selectmen Court. It doesn't mean it needs to stay here, but I would, um, as I said, uh, to um, as I said before the meeting, I think it's something that we need to move forward with. Um, as I understood it, Scout Hall was mostly complete, and I think that there is a punch list that needs to be um, uh, addressed. And I think that this board can do that with the help of um, Bob Skozik and the, uh, the DDW department. Um, I have not spoke uh, about um, CPC funds with, with um, the CPC committee, um, but I would like to, by way of an update, I'd like to try and find a way forward for taking the rest of the items of Scout Hall to include use, prospective use, um, for, for the way that this board is organized. Um, I like to go forward with that. So I like to work with each of you to to try and come up with a, a plan, possibly in a workshop, on how to move forward. So I, I think that's really what I have for an update. I'd like to move forward um, with the discussion during the workshop, more with what, one of the workshops and how we can uh, finish the the, um, the punch list. I'd like to see the punch list. We got to make, right? OK. Oh. We, it's um, already could been that, Could made. that just be sent out email? OK. Um, Mr. Terenzini, for the punch list that's left, um, who would be the best person to furnish that? Um, we'll get that from Bob and get that out in the next few days okay. if you'd like. Okay. So in, during the um, during a, a workshop discussion, I think that I'd like to talk about um, the, the punch list funds, um, whether it's un unexpended or uh, to be expended whether they can be, and in in, I'd like to talk about the use for it going forward. It's town property. Um, I know that uh, it had, uh, and Julie, you can stop me if I'm uh, incorrect with this, when it was, when that property was donated, it had a suggested use. Um, so I'd like to discuss that when we, when we can. So we received an email um, about monies, um, the status of the monies appropriated and expended. Okay. from um, Carter on Thursday. Okay. So we can print that or perhaps that could be included um, in the workshop agenda so that everyone could have it. Okay. Um, I did review that. Okay. Um, so just so you know, I, I know we've, I have a hard time um, keeping up with okay. um, the email with all I have going on at the moment, but we did receive um, an email with a Word, uh, a Word document okay. and a PDF. So we'll need a punch so. list, a budget, and then bring your ideas on use. Yeah. What about its original intent? That's that's what I'm referring to. That's so we can we can have be. that as well. Yeah. All right. I can email you all the dates of the. Or I can just make copies and bring them to the yeah. meeting. The the minutes I, I of the selectman good. meeting from February 16 when it was created, the town meeting vote with the first funding, and all of that stuff. Cool. And the uh, budget versus the expenditure. Uh, report that you get from the from Kelly uh, under special articles or uh, for CPC it's it's got listed the last vote of 50k and then what was left from the first 50,000 which is around 11,000 okay well I think Carter just that's what Carter just sent to us right. was 
um, All that information the, is beginning the to be status of the monies appropriated. And it went out to both boards, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you for that I don't, I don't really want to go backwards in time. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate that, that you don't go backwards in time. The documentation has been sent out to both boards, the advisory committee and the board of selectmen. Right. If people want to pull up their emails and pull it open, please take right. a moment it's, to do it's that. All here. Okay. That's what I'm proposing for our, our next workshop. Right, just to go forward. So punch list, budget. Um, and to go forward. Use, documentation. Mr. Chairman, for uh, purposes of clarification, when you say the next workshop, uh, there had been one originally scheduled for the first yeah, we're not Wednesday one in March. In March, and that had been canceled due to the all-day budget session being okay. held on the 14th. Um, rather than uh, spend a lot of time going back and forth, uh, I'm wondering if you might um, set a date certain for when you would like to hear this matter. Rather than just kick it to the next? Well, at, at this point, uh, the next workshop, frankly, isn't until almost June. Oh, right. Uh, because we, we go into budget mode uh, so here. What are you suggesting? Just find a meeting and put it on? Um, I am suggesting at this point uh, that we put the workshop of uh, the first Wednesday in March back on the calendar uh, for this item. Um, okay. And the perseveration thereon. All right, that would be March the 4th. That is my suggestion, subject to the pleasure of the board. We're meeting on the 11th, I think. Yep, we're meeting on the 11th. I'm out of town. On the 4th? On the 4th. Yeah, I don't want to do it then. Can we do it? I, I mean, I can, can do we, it remote, can but I'd it, rather be here. Can we do it on the 11th at a business meeting? Does it have to be at a workshop? Um, the or reason why I think it's good it? for a workshop is because we can spend a little bit of time on it, pull these documents together and say, this is what we've got going forward. And I mean, if, if we thought of, if we thought the deliberation of all of those things was going to result in a vote, then sure, I, I could, I could see that happening. That should happen. Because all right, well, have a for the interest of time, then let's just put it on the 11th. Polly, can we? On a business meeting? On a business meeting. Yeah. That way. Because there is a town meeting. Yeah. There's, okay. there's stuff to show with the intent. All right. March 11th. That's your pleasure, sure. It's it on is. the agenda. Okay. Are you doing back? No. No, not on that one. Okay. okay. Anything more on that? Okay. Um, Holly, I put budget update, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Carter, do you have any budget update items? Uh, we can give you a real quickie. Uh, first pass through the budget, uh, trying to fund uh, what everyone uh, wanted and needed. Um, under the guidelines we have was a deficit of about 130,000. Uh, we've whittled that away. We still have a deficit of about 30,000 uh, yet to close. Um, the first 100,000 was fairly painful. The next 130,000 will be a little more painful, um, but um, we'll, we'll get there. It will not allow for the growth in veterans' benefits, the uh, advisory reserve, and the snow and ice that we'd like to see. Uh, there's around 10,000 by itself. Uh, and we know that um, IT and town council uh, are perpetually underfunded. Um, so it'll be... Um, Challenges. Challenging but doable depending upon uh, the back bills needed in the fall and the spring. Yeah. And they have they haven't they really haven't been outlandish yeah. uh, when you when you look at them. Um, may I ask what we did with my um, override question? Um, I was awaiting for the board to bring that up tonight. This is the agenda item that I thought uh, where the board would most likely have those discussions. Well, because there were only um, two people we here, it. but then Terry sent out a blast email. So I guess I'm, I I don't know if we're, I should assume that everyone knows that I sat before the board um, last week and I made a plea 
for this board to, um, I've asked this board to support me in $143,466 for an override for the police. Um, we have continually um, turned a blind eye to uh, risk management and loss mitigation and put police out in the street alone and for the community we go dark which means that we do not have a police officer under duty during certain hours of the night um, and it would be 20 cents um, per thousand and um, uh, Mike and um, Terry um, said they would support it but now I'm not sure I didn't would say anything Oh, you, hold on, just let her finish. You can ask. I, I, I think it's worth discussing. Yeah. No, okay, so that perhaps I misunderstood. And what with the email that Terry sent out. So I'm asking um, the police um, stand behind it. I've spoken to them. And um, they think that we can accomplish this goal with the town. It would be signs and letter mailings and standing in the street and I would um, bust my tail um, doing this and they believe that the town would support it. Um, I know that the town is probably overrided out but that last year when the school committee asked for an override it was for almost a million dollars. I'm not asking for a million dollars I'm asking for 143,466 and not all of that I need um, $125,000 to $130,000 for the police station and the rest would probably um, go to snow and ice. And um, but that's round number two dimes, 20 cents. So um, I had come before the board, but I am happy that this week um, all of us are here for us to talk about that. Mr. Thank you. I just have a question, yes, Mr. Chairman. What is the money for? I mean, you for said for the police officer. station, for, for or police is officer. it for an officer? Because I'm a little officer. confused on that. It's for an officer. For so them it's to, it's so for them to to not go out alone. To, for well, them they're to not. They're not. We're not black, by the way. We state police cover the town of Templeton, just so people are aware the of that. The police state when police we cover. Can, yes. Right. We we're not. They come when black. they. Can I mean, there's come. someone on our roads. Fortunately, mm -hmm. for the, for all of us. Um, but the safety is in place. It's just very weak, and I agree, it's, it's and I've always weak. supported that. Um, I just, the way that you were just explaining it confused me a bit. Is it for your police for station a, project? No, it's for the police. <laughs> um, or is it actually for, it's for hiring someone? Can you? Well, if, if I might. Expand um, on that? If I might. Um, as I understand it, uh, what Diane's presented as a request for a 20-cent override which will raise around $143,000 and, and what some odd change. That? The primary use of that money would be to hire one additional police officer, uh, which would get you back to where you were about 10 or 12 years ago. Um, the balance, the spread, the 18,000 or so, we would look at the best uses for that. Snow and ice is a, is a good, very much in need. Um, there's also so that's remember not okay. the the police department itself expanded in size, but we didn't expand the size of the uh, um, building and grounds budget to pay for the energy. Um, we didn't have uh, provisions for a, a custodian. So you know where that seventeen thousand five hundred eighteen thousand the best pace for that to land. I mean, the important thing that we need to know is, is it this board's instruction to us to prepare uh, an override question uh, for that $20,000 uh, with its primary purpose being the hiring of one additional police officer? Uh, because we have to get that ready uh, for a formal vote for you. It has to be part of the budget package, and we have to get it ready for a formal vote for you because the questions for the ballot are due to the clerk before you actually vote on the warrant and the um, uh, the budget. Mr. Chair, if yes. I may, that was twenty cent override, right? Not a. Yeah, you said twenty thousand. You said twenty thousand. That's 20 what I confused. My apologies. My uh, 
20 cents. My question is, well, I have a couple of concerns. Uh, my first concern is 20 cents. It's an easy sell, it's not a lot of money, but is it sustainable, that amount, to keep that, I don't want to get an override low, get an officer, and then lay them off in a year or two, Which or be exactly look, digging for the funds to cover that officer, because we have collective bargaining agreements that increase costs. We have, we know the pension is at least 10%, double digits for the next what, 15 years or so. And I also recall that in 2018, there was an override of about four seventy seventy six thousand in short change. And it was about 273 of that went to fire EMS. And a year later, just this past summer, we were cutting budgets, including the fire EMS. The chief came, Dickey came, and asked for a $20,000 transfer out of the ambulance receipts. Mm -hmm. And I believe we had it one full-time firefighter paramedic leave for budgetary mm -hmm. reasons. Um, so that's my, my concern is, yes, the 20 cents, people will say, oh, that's, you know, I just paid a buck six for a cup of coffee. So it's, it's not much, but is it sustainable to maintain the cost of a police officer? Because it's gonna go directed to the police the first year after right, that, it just gets that. thrown in the pot. That's that's my concern. I, yeah. I know you've been on this for however many years. However many and, years and, I've been on the board. And I and I and I know I, I you you stick to your thing and you do it. It's just my concern that it's it's not enough to keep that officer here. I just I don't want to see us get somebody, and they if if they have to go to the academy or whatever, all of those costs, and then turn around in a year or two later and, and, and cut budgets and they, they get you know, laid off And we're still paying whatever. the tax. And we're still uh, paying the 20 cents. It's, that's, that was the first thing when I, watched, uh, when I watched the meeting when you made your presentation was I, I, I thought it's too little. And I understand the approach because you're getting 20 cents will get you to what you need, but I'm just, I, I just don't want to see us do this and then in two years, Can't. We, we're cutting and, and laying them off because we did 273 for fire EMS. It's, I, 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 that's, my, that's my only thought, concern about, about it, is I want it, to, if we're gonna do that move, I want it to be sustainable. So, so uh, maybe we could work out, uh, Adam, with someone. Yes, do the, you can't that's sustain. my concern. And if you wanted in to offer anything about In simplest terms, you can't sustain the budget you have. Thank because you. your increases outpace your revenue. People don't understand how the Prop 2.5 works. So of your um, 18 million and change, some is excluded, about 2 million roughly, so you got 16. Some is reimbursements from sewer water and the others another roughly 2 million. So you got 14 million. Of that, about uh, 10.5 million comes from pro uh, taxes. That can go up 2.5%. The balance goes up by the amount that the state will give you. They're giving us on a million five next year, they're giving us an extra, <coughs> I think 19,000 if I remember. That's, that's not 2.5%. And on the balance, many of them don't go up at all or they're tied very much to economic activity. So if the question is, can we stay, sustain the budget? The answer is no, you can't. We go through that every year. We tell you that every year. Mm -hmm. So now the question, let's move to the more specific. Can you sustain this officer with a override at, uh, at the 20 cents? Uh, in the short term, the answer on a three to five year term is, unless there's a wild card thrown to you someplace else, mm -hmm. like a $1.1 million ask from the schools, the answer is yes. In the short term, you can. Three yeah, years, okay. four years, yes. And one of the things that we do when we present overrides is you'll notice we always put the retirement in there. Retirement doesn't come due next year. It comes due the year after. But we try to always make sure 
that we're looking that okay. year out, that two years out, so that that initial override is is good. Now, if you say, well, I want to make sure we have a number that we can sustain for a number of years, and you say, okay, we're going to run the whole thing, and in 10 years, we need $200,000 for this person. So you ask for $200,000. You're overtaxing people for all the period of time that you didn't need that. And, and how do you rationalize that? These are why all I do is the math. You guys get to make the policy decisions. Well, I, I just, just, I mean, that's, we, we've had some exchanges on this. The two things I've learned, three things I've learned about overrides. One is they need to have a very specific purpose. So asking for an override just because you don't have enough money does not tend to pass. Secondly, is you do need to pay attention to how you're going to market it. So if it's two dimes, if it's one quarter, if it's the 99 cent, you need a way to translate that to the taxpayer in a way that they can understand and get their head around. Because we live, sleep, eat, and breathe this daily. You get, well, Jeff does day and night. Um, and the rest of you, three, four, I mean, you get your... But you need a way to communicate with the people. And the third thing I've asked, learned is don't overreach. Because even the best purpose, if it's too taxing, literally, you will not get the support that you need. So what's the right number? The 20 cents can be sustained on a three to five year level, assuming you don't get hit with a wild card coming out of left field. I just, and that's, uh, so the people just heard, I, and I don't think that's been said recently, the amount of money that they get by taxes and, and where it comes from, where it all comes from. They see, you know, you got an $18 million budget or 20 or whatever. They, they don't often see, or it's not always presented, uh, talked about the way that you just did it in terms of, you know, we only get like 10 million from taxes, 10 and a half, out of, you know, the, the 18 to 20 mil that if you add everything up at town meeting, it, that's where it is. And I'm not saying I don't want to try it. I'm just, I just want to be telling the people that this is how things add up over time, you know, over time. It's just, uh, it's just, I, I was looking at that and I, like I said, I watched the meeting and that was just my first thought about it was whether it was going to be able to do long term what you want to do. And I understand it. I get it. And I know you've been pushing. You've, that's been your thing. Every year you, you talk about this. That, that's I just I'm just looking at it long term. The hope because like I said, I don't want to see, you know, you work it, it passes. And then in two years or three years, you know, we're laying them off because of a budget. And, Maybe things will work. Maybe the state will start funding the schools and it will free up money and stuff. But that was just my, my concern about that. I understand the concern, and I would like to ensure that this board um, puts that money um, back towards the police officers. And we have um, schools that ask for more money than we have the capability of um, funding. They're not going to live within their means or our means. but. Uh, at this point, again, I say it every year, it's liability, loss mitigation, and risk assessment. And we can't pretend that something is never going to happen here, and because that's not true. And we've been, we've been lucky. And yes, we have the state police, but you have to wait for as long as they can get here. And that's the way that that goes. And right now, we need, the, I've said it every year. I would like to have that police officer back. So I've never, last year I asked for it and the, you know Carter said we could use overlay and then I said no because that is not a good use of the town's money so I let it go. And this year I'm asking you to support an override. It is your wish whether to say yes or no. What's confusing to me is that we're asking for a police officer but we're including a bunch of other stuff in there. So. To recap what Jeff said, 
Is it sustainable so we're going to pay the police officer's salary and anything that has to do with the union is included in that salary too? The, you know, That's what Carter figured out. Is that what he said? So it's going to be the police officer's sal and salary and the benefits and then there's going to be another portion of it that's going to go to maintenance of the police station through the city department to keep the parking lot up or no, what we're, is we're, the we're other I'm, part of it because so it costs you it's approximately more than just an officer all of a sudden to hire uh, an officer um, equip them train them um, provide the cost of their benefits uh, is roughly $100,000 a year. In year two, uh, you're going to get about half of their salary into the pension base, uh, and you're going to pay 23% of that. So that's going to be uh, roughly um, $7,500. In year three, and he's going to have a small bump. In year three, the balance of his salary comes in and you to the pension system, and you'll pay 23% on that. So that's about $125,000 roughly by the end of year three. Uh, the reason you would add, whether it's some more money for the police department, which I've cut the budget on um, uh, fairly severely, uh, whether it's... Um, uh, the added heat that we've had to eat elsewhere in the budget, or whether it's the custodial service that we haven't provided for, whether it's snow and ice, is goes to the idea of the marketing. Going to folks with an override uh, that is 18 cents, it's, it's tough to present, it's tough to have a good PR campaign on. So I always encourage boards that are thinking about this Make your override one thin dime, two thin dimes, one quarter, the 99 cent cup of coffee um, at Cumbies. You have to have a way to communicate that. You don't just pick a number, um, frankly, and if it's 17 cents, use that. You, because you can't communicate that well. People can't wrap their heads around that. Uh, so that's why you take the 143, you need 125 for the police officer, and you, you put some filler in there uh, that you need. You need all these things. You have a deficit you're running annually on snow and ice in the $60,000 range. And you're relying upon every year you're going to generate enough free cash to backfill it. So there's no savings in our budget, no wiggle room in our budget. We spend everything that our town yeah, takes in. Out. We spend everything, every penny. He started out with a deficit already. <clears throat> it, we're in a deficit. Can you cut it? Sure. Anybody can cut a budget. You just you just hack it. But um, my point was we can't, there's no room to save any money no. to put this debt on down the line. No. Nothing. When you no, see but that, this well, can I can I ship, uh, so please. she so she um, the email that Diane talked about. I think it's important just for the public, so we're not talking about something that people don't know what you're talking about. Your concern was families taking the burden of any addition to Even the tax the rate. Even the police officers. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, in one of your proposals, you said, "What if we did some kind of." Um, account that we're actually paying into the rainy day fund for a police officer the reason why that will not work is because we're talking about an operational cost you can put money into it but you're just kicking down you're kicking a, a, a balloon down the road your costs increase every single year that you're trying to pay you or or as uh, Carter characterized it earlier if you're taxing people you're using their tax dollars for something a service they're not they're not getting, they're not getting. You're putting money into an account so that in the hopes someday that you have enough that that would be sustainable to pay out of. So I understood what you were saying in there, but it doesn't work with how an operation, um, the OPEX, um, an operating cost would, would be um, executed out of the budget. But it was, I think it was worth basically uh, blasting to us to say, is this something that we consider as a way? How do we get out of yeah. debt and stop? spending money we don't have.
Well, I mean, how do we get out of debt is we improve our financial management policies and we get better. I hear you, you can't. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I just had a quick question. A town can't get uh, out of debt. Yeah, just one sec. Um, are, Stop. Are finished. I'm sorry. My apologies. I'm well, I just, I, you know, I, I want to go. So, Terry, if you're done, then. Julie. Julie. Only if you're all set. I understand what, what you're trying to get at. And, and I've actually supported Diane. I think Diane's well aware of how much I support the public safety in our town. Um, and once again, I'll repeat myself as I have for the last, um, I guess, nearly five years. Economic Development Committee, who's on it? Are the meeting minutes online? Can people review what we're doing to build our economic base? We don't have a because full committee. Because we need to bring in business to the town of Templeton if you want to keep a full police, a full fire, a full highway, anything. You need to bring in money besides residential taxes. It has to be more than that. And we don't have it. And we have a questionable committee. Questionable committee, I guess that's not we don't have a full fully no. um, staffed. staffed. So there's your answer. If we don't bring in revenue, we can't keep putting money out. We've been down that road, it doesn't work. And I fully support where Diane's going with this to try to get an override. I also agree with Jeff that if we can't sustain it long term, I don't want to go down that road just yet. I want to know that we can comfortably say we're going to maintain that for eight to 10 or 15 years. And I can't justify that because where's the money coming from? Besides only the taxpayers in town, please tell me where it's coming from because we haven't economically developed the town of Templeton since I've been on this board. I've seen one new business come into town. So that's just my thoughts on the whole matter. Just right. want to put that out there. We also have Mr. a school so, that's coming yeah. due. Mr. Right. Terenzini. Uh, my apologies, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I get frustrated with my clear uh, inability to communicate what I've been trying to communicate for three and one half years. If you want to, um, there is no way to get out of debt because even if you pay those debts off, you have a substantial infrastructure you have failed to invest in for well over 30 years. Amen. A road, right. bridge, Amen. ditch, sidewalk, Amen. culvert uh, system that requires investments north of 1.3 millions of dollars, you spend south of 400,000 of dollars. The school and the police station are the first new building you've done in many years, um, other than the senior center, which requires a quarter of a million dollar roof <laughs> at present, which we're barely keeping, uh, I, I can't even say we're keeping it dry. I can't even say we're barely keeping it dry because we aren't. Um, the uh, two fire stations are woefully inadequate. Uh, so on the investment side, you are dramatically behind where you need to be, let alone uh, your enterprise fund investments uh, in terms of your, your water and your sewer and your other infrastructure. Uh, on the operating budget, we do not fund all that we need to fund. We're not doing uh, the kind of um, uh, maintenance that we need to do. Uh, and you will see when you get that budget book the kinds of cuts in some cases just plain hacking away uh, to try to make it fit. Mm -hmm. So if you want to reduce taxes, give something up. That's the only way to do it. This is not really difficult. There's three basic ways you um, find ways to do things more efficiently. We are not in the widget factory business, and so we have reorganized the departments, we have cross-trained people, we have found the $15,000 Meals on Wheels program, mm -hmm. a nonprofit partner to take it on for zero. We've tried everything we can, 
but there's not a lot of mechanization or other things that we can do. You can shed services. No one wants to do that. Or you have to find new revenues. If you don't want to find them through taxes, that means taking a, a closer look at your fees. And we've done that. We've done that with ambulance. We did it with building permits. You'll see some of it come to you. Or economic development. This administration, this board, this administration is doing what it can with um, the cannabis initiative. I mean, with the support of this board, we made an announcement to anybody that was within d d hearing range or could at least get a, non a mailing that we would send them. We're open for business. Uh, so we're doing everything we can. Um, but at the end of the day, sometimes it just plain comes down to shedding services. Carter, I have a question, if you don't mind. Um, I don't mind. Okay. What kind of incentives can we offer business owners as a town to bring them in? Virtually none, except for you do have from a processing or industrial standpoint a very attractive electric rate by comparison to what a manufacturer um, or a large retail operation, or a cannabis right, cultivator. Right. And, and our tax um, rate is the same as the and residential. And our tax rate is very whereas attractive. Whereas some other communities, it's not. Like, if you look at Boston, I know that's a really bad comparison, but it's a it's a really lopsided comparison. You, you don't even have to go that far. If you look at Westminster, Ashburnham, okay. um, Ethel, uh, the others. Yeah. But that requires often an investment in infrastructure. Yeah. I'm not going to let Carter tell his, one of his normal stories because it's a great story, but I'm not going to let him tell it this time. Why are you um, going to tell it? I'm going to tell it in a, in a succinct way. So it's also how a town communicates with businesses. Um, if, it, if businesses have difficulty doing things, um, the town being a partner with them, um, making the businesses feel like if they, if they hear that Templeton is a bad place to do business, that it did, does impact it. But if they hear that Templeton is a good place to do business because they have a problem with their um, getting rid of certain excess materials or something, his, his example is the, the ban a banding machine that the town helped out with. See, I do listen. Um, so it's, it's how we communicate to businesses as well. The last administration, so um, Terry, you and I won't recall it as much. I'm not sure if it happened during Jeff's time but certainly during Diane and Julie, there, you know, I think if you, if we say there's 500 businesses in town, there's, there's an outreach to them mm -hmm. to basically saying, hey, how are you doing? Is there anything that we can help with? That's a big incentive to make sure that businesses feel that they're a part of the community. Um, for businesses that haven't yet gotten into the community, you know, I think the police call it knock and talk. Um, you know, basically introducing things. Uh, you got a, this bright young guy over here who got Westfield could, to come over and, and do a study for us. It's, it's those networking uh, opportunities that I think is good as well. But as Julie um, had stated, if we don't have quorums and movement on the Economic Development Committee, then we're, we're kind of we're stymied. We're kind of cut down by the ideas and action plans to get out to um, to start to start going out to businesses to say what can, what can we do uh, what would you like to see happen in town um, versus the t the businesses that are uh, outside looking for new homes but that's a great question. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, finally on, on the override thing, it's really it's it's not really up to us. It's only up to us to put it in front of the voters and I, I agree and let them. I understand. Let yeah. them decide. Certainly, we could talk about it moving up to the election. Just. What kind of went over tonight, you know, this, that, other things, but it's going to come down to, and I'm in favor, put it in front of the voters, even though I personally don't, you know, think uh, that it uh, is, is big enough, frankly. Yeah. But wearing a selectman's hat, mm -hmm. put it in front of the voters and, and let, them, let them decide. Yeah. I feel, Jeff, though, that. And they can. And we I, 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 you know, I will not have that mentality because we're going to have to work to asking for the override because that's what happened with school. They just kind of said, here, here's select board, put this in front of the voters, 
and then the school didn't do anything politically to ask for that. So I feel like if I'm the only one mm -hmm. who's really feeling like, you know, I mean, the police are going to help with um, like union with signs. We want to do a letter writing campaign. We want to do uh, knock and talk. Is that what you call that, Mike? That talk. was really good. Like and we want to, I mean, it would be, I just want to state for the record that it is this board's responsibility and and really moral compass to do loss mitigation, and I feel like we haven't done that. Well, and think, putting them out there alone is not a good idea, and we keep doing it. Well, I think and that's it, to the whole board, not just to you, Jeff, even I, though I'm looking at you. You don't hurt my feelings. I, uh, I think we've done more the workshop and tonight as far as discussing and override and how it works in the town finances than the school did the whole time. And it, it, we could speak to this, uh, selectmen's comments, whatever. hopefully people will show up. Because until we get to the point like some communities where we have like Facebook Live and stuff, uh, like uh, I think it's North Andover that's, that's doing that now with their meetings and stuff. But we, And I know that's down the road, but until we get to that point, mm -hmm. we need to talk about, you know, we can talk about it over and over again as the chair wants to yeah. uh, put this stuff on the agenda or under comments. Right. Uh, gather information and, and project information to the residents instead of, like you said, there's an override, it's for the police, decide. And that, that's not what I, I meant by what I said, but I just, oh. it's not our decision whether the override happens or not. It's our decision to put it in front of the voters and then talk once that's done and you know like you said make the case for it right. uh, and so I think we certainly started this evening or actually you started at the workshop yeah. but um, well I uh, guess I do I, I is there consensus for putting that on the warrant or no um, well, this is so, uh, so this is what I was going to say. So tonight it's on the agenda as FY21 budget update. Okay. I, know, I think to have some kind of uh, vote or motion tonight would not, I, I don't feel that it has, like there's not I need a bunch time. of people here to ask questions or otherwise. So if we're going to have a vote for it, even though we discussed it as a budget item tonight, mm -hmm. um, I would put it on a future date if we, if we want to okay. vote for it. That well, way we, we have, have yeah, deli we have uh, an ample amount of deliberation on that. The next uh, business meeting is February 26th. Carter, um, do, you, do you see any reason to not no, put that, it on that? That'll, um, I want to be clear, then it will not be in the budget and legislative package on the 26th. That's all. That's not a problem. Um, we can put this uh, on the agenda for that night. You, it needs to be on there. Diane, does it need to be on there? Well, the bu the in order for me to move forward with anything, signs, letter writing, I have to, can, can I just have some kind of consensus? Should I move forward? Should I not move forward? Should I put this to bed? Should I, I don't know what to do. Well, I've, I, the, our last meeting I told you that I, su I support that. That's you. That's correct. You're you the should. only one. You should move forward with it, like I said, to get it, make the case, start making the case so when it gets in front of the voters, the more time you you, you put it out there, we, we talk about it and stuff, the more information the voters will have so when it gets in front of them. So I would say, yes, start your stuff now. So, you, so if I can, Mr. Yeah, I mean, um, I need some help with this. If there is a consensus to explore this short of a formal vote because it wasn't on the agenda tonight. Right. Yeah. I'll put it in the legislative package. You can take a formal vote on the 26th of February, um, uh, which lets her proceed. Uh, and I'll talk with Diane, 20 cents, 25 cents. You know, what's going to be the best thing to do? It'll also address some of Jeff's concern. The uh, third thing that I told you I learned about overrides is don't propose them unless you really think you can get them passed. I'm okay. I believe I selfishly trying to protect my win-loss ratio. 
Um, because a loss is a loss, and that stays in people's heads for the next couple of years. And everyone's afraid to then touch the next one. Well, you lost that one. Um, so we'll include it uh, based upon a consensus that I'm hearing tonight. We'll include it in that budget and legislative package, uh, including the formal uh, ballot question. But you can't increase your pass ratio if you don't take the shot. <laughs> <laughs> but, if you, but if you miss your ratio goes down uh, okay this is going to um, be it all right okay. so let, let's do that moving forward um board Thank and staff you. board and staff member comments tonight um can i start over on the right hand side um, i have none i have nothing right i've got nothing just a little FYI, Noel Francis is meeting with Susanna Wh Representative Whips going forward to try to write some a bill to pass this year for a one time, but not just for Narragansett, but for the uh, regional schools in her district. When are they meeting? Um, this week they were supposed to meet. At, no, last week they were supposed to meet, and he was going to give me an update. I just get updates from time to time. So that's where that's going. Okay. It's taken on a life of its own. Great. Thanks for the update. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Uh, I don't want to start a piston contest, and I don't want to have a big back and forth thing or something. However, uh, my comment concerns a department of the town and a resident. Uh, Steve Drury did come before the board. Uh, and talked about uh, his light meter and, and all of that. Right. Uh, and I and I believe when people come before the board, they, they come for several reasons. It's either to propose something, seek information, or look for help, a solution. And as the Board of Selectmen, as some state statutes, but more importantly, our bylaws, our local home rule guide, uh, the Board of Selectmen is over, is in charge, the general management of the town, the legal affairs, and the financial affairs. So when Stephen spoke to I about manage the, town. the AMIs and all yeah. of that stuff, I, uh, I, had, that clarification. I had noticed a, uh, a 75 cent increase in the service customer service charge on my light bill mm -hmm. back in July of 18. So I emailed the general manager, asked about the 75 cents. Um, he explained about the installation cost for the system uh, was about $800,000, and the total cost should only be to Templeton Municipal Light uh, about $200,000. Uh, but he explained to me that the additional 75% in 75 cents in monthly customer charges for residential customers was to pay for their portion of the, and I think maybe the numbers got skewed or something, the 900000 total for the installation. So he's telling me in 18 that the part of the customer service charge was to pay for the cost of changing the meters. And then uh, we got an email, uh, I say we, the selectmen, uh, from the general manager, and it speaks to the service charge of uh, what that th uh, $3.75 go to. And it says our residential AMI electric customers pay a monthly customer charge, a fixed charge that is not tied to kilowatt consumption, but rather to the light department's monthly cost of reading the meter, processing a bill, mailing a bill, and processing a payment. And they still use the post office they uh, to send out to send out the bill so there's an additional cost and then it's the AMI system the cost of actually reading the customer's meter is almost zero um, and so it, it's yeah I when I read that I, it seemed like he was grouping all those things together right and, and you put more stock in the other admin when, things than when the you know when I asked about the reading. customer service charge it's almost like I'm getting two different answers to the same question. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was also a, a light commissioner, Greg Edwards, who was a former selectman. There are two former selectmen on the light commissioner, Chris Stewart and, and Greg Edwards. 
And he emailed, it's a lot of administrative work for $1,200. Uh, is this worth the anguish to push back on a few consumers who don't want the AMI? And he asked, uh, those new MI meters, are they realized any savings or are we trying to make a point, almost as if we're going to charge you this much money and put a lien on your thing just to try to force you to, to go with the AMI meters. Uh, and lastly, why I would think that the Board of Selectmen could have some input in this, or, and, and maybe we need a conversation to ask the general manager and the light commissioners to come, because they are a town department. Uh, no matter what any one commissioner or the general manager may say, they are part of the town. And the, the Mass General Law Chapter 164 that the light department always, often references Section 56, Management of the Plant. It says, all, <clears throat> all accounts rendered to or kept in the gas or electric plant of any city shall be subject to the inspection of the city auditor or officer having similar duties, and in towns, they shall be subject to the inspection of the selectmen. So, When Mr. Drury or any other resident comes here and inquires about you know difficulties or issues with the light department, I don't think our proper response, uh, as I got uh, an email in my selectmen's look, that you would have to go talk to the light commissioners because it's not the board's jurisdiction. It's you don't have anything to say about this. I think that being a town department. And the section of Mass General Law, Chapter 164, that I just referenced, I think we, the Board of Selectmen does have input in this and perhaps invite the general manager, the light commissioners, to a meeting and, again, uh, and, and see uh, if we can get a little bit more, you know, together on things rather than a department of the town trying to be a separate entity unto themselves. And when they go to try to borrow money, they are told, y you are part of the town. So, and again, this is all about a resident who came to the Board of Selectmen, I think, looking for answers and looking for assistance and help. And by just telling them, well, go talk to the light commissioners. I, or I, it's too late. I don't think. He's heard uh, it's too I late. I don't think that is, uh, is, is helpful. And again, I don't want to start no pissing contest and I realize that we are, we're, we're only under board in that staff member don't, comments, uh, so. you know want to open this can or go this route but uh, when a, a resident comes to the board and, and is looking for help uh, I think we should look for ways to try to help them and maybe we should uh, try try talking with them and, and see uh, what can be done about it okay uh, that, that's my Excuse me, Thank Mr. You, Mr. Chairman. And I'm not trying to be ignorant. I want to understand both sides of the coin. You know, there's, 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 there's more than just one issue with Mr. Drury. There's, a, there's the issue of the meter itself and the, the choice of the meter, but there's also the issue of the, the type of RF waves and what could potentially be a danger to people in the future. I think that's a lot to it's take on as a board of selectmen. I, I understand what, what Jeff is saying, but if you start talking about the science of what, you know, the lights giving off energy or something like that, that's not something I want to get into pol policy writing about. Um, Carter, Holly, staff, staff, staff member comments? I'll include, do you have something to comment on one of them? Uh, on one of, on I have nothing, Mr. Chair. Okay. May I make a brief comment? On one of the things that they brought up? Uh, no. On, uh, on the agenda, beginning. this is staff comments, right? Yeah. But that's for the, the Board of Selectmen staff. That's not, I'm not going to start, I can't open it up to the entire, Steve, what, what do you want? I would just like to make a comment on the scout hall issue, if I can. Very Why quickly. did you not make it under when we discussed it? I just want to thank the board for taking up the okay. South Hall issue. Okay. And I appreciate you doing this. And I have submitted a packet to the 
town administrator's office okay. that I expect will be <coughs> delivered to your board. Okay. And I think I speak on For, behalf like, of proposal? everyone who works with TCTV that we appreciate you taking this up mm. and your fair consideration of the matter. That's all I wanted to say. Mm. <laughs> okay, I did. I just didn't want to get in depth when it when when we we already kind of gotten our 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 our, uh, our track for that. But thanks, Steve. You're welcome. Um, okay. All right. Um, I believe we need to go into executive session. Uh, I'm afraid we do, Mr. Chairman. I anticipate asking you for as many as four um, actions upon reconvening. In public session. Okay. Um, I make a motion to adjourn from regular session um, and enter into executive session with the purpose of coming out of executive session with uh, uh, likely four possible actions in open session after um, the closed executive session. What, ch ch why are we going into executive um, session? This is a, a request for executive session in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Subsection 21A3, Stra Strategy, Collective Bargaining with the Police Department, and 21A6, um, Real Estate Negotiations uh, for TES, um, and Subsection 21A2, uh, Non-Union Contract Negotiations. So moved. Okay, I have a motion and I need a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion? Hearing nothing on the, the motion to come out, uh, to adjourn from uh, regular session into executive session and to come back out. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well.